Good morning. We are going to be making my breakfast casserole this morning. First of all, I'm going to brown two pounds of sausage. the J.C. Potter. Ooh. Still a little frozen, which is good. You want it to stay frozen until you get ready to use it. There's a store here in town, the store here in town. They don't uh, keep their sausage frozen and I've had to return several rolls because it was a little rotten. So, after about the fifth roll I returned, I called the company and I was like, you know, what's going on? I've used this brand for all my life and I'm getting lots and lots of rotten meat. And so that's when I found out that they encourage the store to keep it frozen. They can't make them, but they strongly encourage them to keep it frozen. So, just an FYI. Do with that what you will. We are going to be... This is the easiest... Um, breakfast casserole I have ever seen. I'd say I made it up, but I mean it's sausage and egg, so it's not like there was a whole lot of thought gone into it. I also use um, cheese and mustard greens when I mix it all up together. The uh, Mustard greens are good for you. They also have a little bit of uh, a little bit of a kick. It's not like hot and spicy. It, it's a little hot and spicy, but not too much. Right. Scott doesn't like a lot of hot and spicy, and this is perfect for him. Ah, I like lots of hot and spicy. The hotter and spicier, the better for me. But he doesn't like a whole lot of it. So, oh, it helps me turn that on. You cannot cook sausage if the fire ain't on. I wonder what was going on. Alrighty. So we're going to let that cook up a little bit. And I'll be right back. Alright, I almost forgot to... Shred some cheese. And my shredder is in a cabinet beside the camera, so let's see if I can do this. Move you over just a little bit. There we go. Just a <coughs> Been under the weather last couple of days. My allergies have been so bad. Yesterday I felt like I had a, I had a bad cold, getting a bad cold. I was kind of sat around and didn't do much. Um, i got to shred some cheese here for it. I'll probably use almost a whole block. It is, I think, 8 ounces. This is 8 ounces. Probably end up using half of it. Um, and the greens, I don't know, I never really measure anything, so it's hard to say how much I use. But uh, mustard greens are really, really good for you. It's high in um, vitamin uh, B, C, and K. It's also 
It's good for um, asthmatic, asthmatics and um, it helps de-intensify, is that a word, de-intensify? If you get a cold or flu or the uh, asthma attacks, um, it's also good for um, detoxifying the body. Um, it's just got a lot of good health benefits and you can hide it in things like this and casseroles and such to where if you don't like the flavor of it by itself that way you still get the health benefits of it and you don't have to just like taste the the yucky flavor I don't know I've never tasted them tasted mustard greens by themselves so I was actually looking for spinach to put in here and I couldn't find any so I grabbed some mustard greens <laughs> and read about it and I thought mm, pretty good so we'll put some mustard greens in it and you can't really taste it I mean it just tastes like um, eggs and sausage together that's what this tastes like so there's the cheese shredded that and then we're still waiting on the sausage to cook so and I've also cut up a little bit of onion I don't know maybe maybe a fourth of a cup is in there um, I chopped those up really tiny better that way and we'll put this in here yes dear what do you need? Just nothing. Oh. I just, mm -hmm. just wanted to say hi. You'll have to go around. The camera can't see you from there. You can, you can see my hair. It's just your hair. That's all it can see. <laughs> Alright, we'll put that over there for when we get ready to put that in. Where's my rag? Where's my rag? Pickable. Get down now. Hey! Get down now. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to uh, cook some more of this sausage up and we'll be right back. So not all of this two pounds is going to be going into the casserole. Some of it I save for a little boy to eat because he likes to eat just the sausage by itself. He don't like the, the egg and other stuff. He's a hair particular. So we'll put that for him and we're going to start cracking some eggs and getting that mixture going. And then, let's see, eggs out. I don't know how many eggs I use because again I don't really count. Um, so we'll see. Excuse me, Molly. What? Can we count this for you? No. Be quiet, please. There's one. And we'll save that stuff, the broken the eggshells and stuff to go in the um, compost pile outside. And I help you, Mommy? Not right now. <laughs> you wanna hand them to me? Three. And how much you Four. I need Okay, you can break one. I'll check it out. You gotta do it a little bit harder. Five. Lean it over the bowl. You gotta use your your thumbs where it's no, see where it's cracked at? Yeah. Put your thumbs in there like that and kinda open it up. Turn it upside down. Open it. There you go. Oh. Put it in there. Now go wash your hands. But I need to. No, you I need got. To I gotta hurry. Come on. Okay. Go wash your hands with soap. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there's a shell. There's lots of shells. Oh my goodness. 
Have you heard the, the trick about using the the actual shell to get any shell that you may have dropped? It works. I just did it there. Let's see, where's that other one? It's like it just jumps right in. Okay, I lost a little bit of my my white, but I guess that's better than having shell, huh? Alrighty. Oh my goodness, my allergies are terrible. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, we got six. I thought I had six before. And there's seven. And there's eight. So what we're going to do with these, some we're going to roll up in burritos. That's nine. Some we're going to make into little squares. Ten. And freeze those. Eleven. And uh, we want the little squares that we freeze. About like a two inch square. And uh, it's really good for a quick breakfast. Just pop it in the microwave. About two minutes, roughly. And I've lost count on the, how many eggs we've used. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 maybe, 15 there, I can't really tell. 15, let's see, here's 16, let's see what that looks like. 12. I'm going to put this up over here out of my way, excuse me, put this over here out of my way, wash my hands real quick. Get my whisk. Stick that in there for a sec. And we need to check on our meat here. Cooking away nicely. Carefully. calls it burger sausage he has forever so you know there's worse things okay my secret recipe or secret ingredient in this seven what just a little me do it nope I got it and then a little bit of pink Himalayan salt What are you eating? Good. I think those are M&M's. Please don't eat M&M's. So we got the eggs, Cook them. the cinnamon, the salt and pepper. Now we're going to put in the onion. Let's see. Yeah. I don't like onions. Maybe, maybe about half. Uh, the onion that I showed you went in there. Now we're getting the mustard greens. And see, sometimes you gotta kind of wring it out because it's frozen. Obviously there's going to be water in there. So let me get some of this uh, broken up and we will be right back. Alrighty, I have cooked the sausage. I have been I'm letting it drain. 
I had already preheated the oven to 375 and now all I got to do is add my cheese. I've already added the onion and add the mustard greens. Scott told me there wasn't enough cheese in it last time so I'm going to put a layer of cheese on top. How much of this? There's probably a pound and a half sausage left. Let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah. I need a few more eggs. We might, we might. So I'm gonna wring out some more of the liquid in the mustard greens. Throw this in here. There's probably, I don't know, a cup and a half. That'd be my guess if I was guessing. Oh, it's gold. And then we're gonna, oops, put it in the pan and cook it for maybe an hour. I can't even remember. I've never, I've just never timed anything. I just, you know, when it's done, I, I did it out. Does it make it very easy to tell people how to do it? I guess that way, but. We're going to find out together for sure today. All right, I think, I think I need a couple more eggs. So, let's do that. One, two, let's see what that looks like. Oh, I need an apron so bad. I just tied this, not tied, but I put one end of the towel, kitchen towel, in my pants, <laughs> and I let it hang out. So, because I'm always having to wipe my hand, and I never know where I put my hand towel. So, I started doing that a long time ago. All right, that is looking pretty yummy. Just a minute, I'll show you. Get all this stuff off of there. Okay. That's what it should look like. Can you see? All right. Then we're gonna need. That's all right. dandy pan. pan. One time I forgot to uh, grease it up. Oh man. I think I had to let the pan soak about two days, and I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. I could not get that stinking egg off of there. Oh, it was so terrible. So you definitely want to grease your pan up good. The egg is terrible to get off, as we all know, I'm sure. Any kind of experience with it at all, you know how bad egg just stinks and stays and it smells so bad. Alright, got her. Stick by the ball. Then we're just gonna pour the mixture right into the pan. Ta da! Yummy goodness. Make sure it's 
spread out evenly. Man, I just don't know. It seems like it needs more egg, but I'm gonna have to like rearrange some of the sausage because it doesn't. Uh, Looks like it's kind of shy in some places of sausage. So I just pick it up and move it around where I need it. Break it up more. Or, you know, it's my OCD, I don't know. I just want to make sure there's enough meat for each little square that gets made. So that's probably a little over a pound of sausage that's in here. You can obviously use more or less, depending on your likes and tastes. And then I'm going to put Put another layer of cheese on the top here. It's a big old chunk of cheese that didn't get grated. Do you all prefer sausage or bacon? And something like this, I prefer sausage. If I was like having eggs over easy, then I want bacon. Weird, huh? It's just what I like. All right, I'm gonna put this puppy in there. Three seventy-five. Oh, don't spill it. Set the timer for 30 minutes, and I'll just uh, check it, see what it looks like at 30 minutes. And um, when I check it, I'll check back in with you guys. See you in a bit. All right, now we're going to do some French toast. I'm going to turn on my burners here. Make sure it's slightly even. Put my griddle on. They let that heat up. Something that I forgot to put in the egg casserole a while ago. I know I was forgetting something. I just couldn't remember what in the world it was. Somebody was distracting me. At least that's what I'm going to blame it on. Do you know what that was? I cannot believe I didn't put milk in there. Mercy. Oh well. I'm sure it'll be fine. There's three eggs. We're gonna try to do this whole loaf. I don't know how many it does. Again, I just, you know, we put it in there and hope for the best. Usually if I run out of the bread and I still have some egg mixture left over, I'll just Throw that in a pan and scramble, scramble the eggs, make scrambled eggs from whatever is left over. I mean, it's the same thing, it's fine, and I've just got a piece of shell in there. That gamut. These eggs don't break very well. Let's see. Alrighty. And with that, I'm out of eggs. So, get another whisk. Put 
that out of here. My go go juice. Secret ingredient. Don't tell nobody. A little bit of cinnamon. Obviously, we don't want to put salt and pepper in with the French toast. I just gotta, I don't know, man, I just eyeball everything. Maybe, maybe a quarter of a cup? I don't know. You see that? Let's see. You see that? So that's what it kind of looks like. Is that gonna fall? Oh. Okay. Let's see. Check it with some butter. Get my spatula. Where is my spatula? Oh, this is ridiculous. I may have gotten put in the wrong drawer. Too much stuff in the way. Is that it in the back? There it is. Ugh. My utensil bucket is behind the little TV that we have in here. So. That's why I couldn't get to it very easily. All right. Get that thing buttered up good. And... Let's see. Put this stuff over here. There we go. And just get a stack of bread. How do y'all clean when you cook? Do you like wait and do it all at the end? Or do you clean as you go? I have to clean as I go. Otherwise, it just, I don't know, drives me nuts. My husband does not clean as he goes. I don't even understand how he cooks. Yet. He makes a terrible mess. It's like a big running joke. Whatever he cooks, I am like scraping it off the wall for the next two weeks. <laughs> but what he cooks is really, really good. In fact, he's taught me a lot about cooking too. When him and I met, I had um, been through a pretty ugly divorce, and um, I had been a stay-at-home mom for several years. I was married for 20 years, and um, I had been a stay-at-home mom the majority of that time, so when I had to go back to work, I quit cooking, and you know that old saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. I lost a lot of it. It took me a lot of practice to get back in the swing of things and okay. really know how to do it. Okay, put it on the table. So, took some time to get used to it and one of the first things I ever made him was pork chops. And the thing of it is, I always burnt pork chops anyway for some reason. Like pork just like scares me kind of. Afraid I'm not going to get it cooked enough and we'll all get Liza Minnelli is what I call it. <laughs> I know it's not the real word, but that's just something silly that we say. We talk in um, code, I guess. A lot of the things that we say is just silliness, but we understand each other. We have our own language. And I'm um, just concerned I'm not going to get it cooked enough. And I don't want to get sick and make anybody sick, so I, I tend to burn 
Well, that first time, I burned the crud out of it. And bless his heart, he ate it anyway. <laughs> but years afterwards, we've talked about it, and he's like, yeah, that was pretty bad. He said, I was concerned. I thought you was lying. He said, you could cook, and you really couldn't. So, but I've, I've, uh, I've done way better since then. So we're going to cook some more of these, and I'll check back in in a few minutes. Alrighty, so once we get these made, I'm going to set them over here for, to, for them to cool off, and then we're going to freeze them. Um, I have a story for you. I heard it a long, long time ago, and boy, I, I thought it was so good. I wanted to share it. I'll share it with anybody who'll listen to me, actually. So there was a woman, or actually a young girl, just newly married, and her mother was showing her how to cook a roast. Go on, please. And the mother was going through all the steps. She got the piece of meat out of the oven, out of the refrigerator. She locks off the end of it. Puts it in the skillet, does her thing. My like daughter says, well, why are you cutting off the end like that? She said, I don't know. That's what my mom always did. So she goes to her grandma. She says, Grandma, how come you cut off the end of the, the roast before you cooked it? She said, I don't know. That's how my mom always did it. So she went to her great-grandma. Again, this is a story, so go come with me. So the great-grandma was asked, Whew, that is smoky. Too hot. I was concerned I had that a little too hot while ago. Um, went to her great-grandmother and asked, Great-grandma, how come you cut the end off the roast before you cooked it? And she said, because the pot that I had, I only had one pot, and the roast was always too big. So I had to cut off the end of it. So, it took all those generations to ask why they did something. Always know why you do what you do. Just because Mama and Grandmama did it, don't mean it's the right thing to do. It could mean it's the right thing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is. They might be doing something for all the wrong reasons because they never asked. They never figured it 